guys, Samantha from JSMA Tutorials here and today we're going to be making a pair of earrings based off of a emperor penguin. So I've got a few different cutters here. Now these are from all three of my oval set cutters and there will be links to them in the description below. Um, but I've got them because they fit inside each other like so. Now I'm going to bring over our first piece which is going to be done with pearl white and silver and these are both Prima and we're just going to be making a three part Skinner Blend done with my Skinner Blend one of my cutters from my Skinner Blend cutter set okay. and now before I continue on please do leave a like on the video it helps the video reach other people that would like to watch this and greatly helps the channel out and is greatly appreciated so if you could do that that would be uh, greatly appreciated so I've just got two pearl white here and one silver and I'm just going to pop them together like so and it doesn't have to be too um, doesn't have to be too accurate now I did want to finish off the edge here so I'm just going to grab some of the silver over here like so and I'm just going to cut off some pieces like so, so that we have a little bit more of that blend going there. Then squish those pieces together because you want them to bond together before you put them through the plaster machine. Now I've done some detailed tutorials on how to do Skinner Blends in the past. Uh, there's a lot of them on my channel so just look up Skinner Blend on my channel and you'll be able to find them. But basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn that into a Skinner Blend and then we can move on to the next step. And here we go. I stopped before we got a perfect Skinner Blend because I like some of the striation in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do a watercolour technique but it's done with um, metallic clays and so you don't need the usual translucent and the black and the white on the back. Again, if you don't know what a watercolour technique is, I have a few of those on the channel. But all we're going to do is we're just going to rip off pieces and we're going to lay it over each other like so. And now because this is metallic clay it will form a sort of mica shift and you'll be able to see that in full effect once we flatten this out. But for the moment just take those pieces and lay them on top of each other like so. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to grab that and that's enough to fit the two of the cutters that I two of the cutter that I've chosen and I've got a little bit of this left over and so I'm going to actually put this on top as a backing so that I can squish it out properly. Then bring over a piece of paper and just give it a burnish. You can roll it if you want to, I prefer to burnish first because I find that it gets rid of all of the gaps better than if you rolled it and rolling it will just kind of thin it out. So just go in, make sure that you get it nice and flat, so you shouldn't feel any more bumps. And we're almost done there, not completely, but just give you a look there. You can see how that looks. Okay. Now I'm just going to grab that and I'm going to put that to the side and we can work with that a little bit later on. We might need to thin it out a little more depending on how big or how thick our other pieces are because we want them all to be about the same thickness. Next step is going to be to create another Skinner Blend. This one is going to be done with Prima Orange and I believe this one is Sunshine Yellow. And I'm just going to bring over another one of my Skinner Blend cutters. And this time we're just going to be doing a two part blend. Now if you're interested in any of the cutters that I use in today's tutorial, I sell them on my Etsy store along with other tools and supplies for polymer clay. There is a link to that in the description below. There we go. Easy. Just grab those up. And before I continue so that I don't get any scraps on my blend, I'll just pick that up. Then I'm just finding the longest side. There we go. Pop those two down like so. And unlike last time, 
I'm going to just take a small triangle from each side and flip it around to form this into a more rectangular shape. Again, it does not have to be perfect. Then you're going to turn that into a Skinner Blend like you did the other one. Okay, and there we go. So I'm just going to pop that on to the side as well with the other piece. And we can use them in a bit. And lastly I want to just do, we don't actually have to do anything but I'm just going to uh, talk about quickly, is this is a three parts black to one part graphite pearl uh, mix. So the graphite pearl, if I bring it over, so I pack it, you can see it's quite a bit lighter. But I don't want to use just plain black because I wanted to echo the pearlescent effect that we have here. So I have made a mix. You don't necessarily have to do it. You could go with just the graphite pearl or the black, depending on uh, which you wanted. But I'm going to take a section of the black. We'll leave this to make our earrings. But I'm going to take this black here and I'm going to just run it through the pasta machine so that we can back this and I'm just going to run all the sheets through the pasta machine so that they're the exact same thickness as one another. Okay, then the last thing we do before cutting everything out so I'm just going to take our black and I'm going to just take a texture sponge. What I'm going to do is I'm scraping over the surface like so. And you can use a piece of sandpaper as well if you want to. But all I'm doing here is just creating a nice, fine texture. There we go. It's not going to be much. There you go. But it's nice. Okay, just clean that up. And before you use that texture sponge again, just give it a wash because that will have picked up a lot of that colour. And so if you happen to use white at any point, it will have white. It will be white with black speckles. Okay. So I always start with the middle piece first, which is going to be this one, which we've rolled out. And I've burnished them onto a piece of paper because I want them to, um, I want to be able to lift them up off the paper. So they might stick a little in the cutters. I've burnished them down quite a bit, so hopefully they won't. But yeah, obviously it's no guarantee. But because they were burnished down quite well, they shouldn't stick too much. I mean, that did not take a lot to press out. Now, obviously, I'm making earrings, so I'll be making a second one. But I'll do that afterwards. I'm going to bring this one over. Then, bearing in mind where I'm going to want my second oval, I'm going to cut out... one of these. Okay. Oops. Pop that to the side, don't need that. Bring over your other piece. And this is why you wanted them all to be the same thickness. Because then you can just slot them in with little to no trouble. Like so. Bring over your second one. And just position it in the right spot. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it is in the middle for me. I have to have my head like right over the top here to be able to center it properly. Okay, now I am going to hold down a little while, lift this up because I don't want it to stick in the cutter. There you go. And you see this um, join line around the piece that we just cut off. If you, sorry, let me explain myself better. The join line around this middle piece will disappear once you cut out your piece. I hope that makes sense. Sorry. Words escaped me today. There we go. Take that out. Clean up any feathering that might be around the edge. Pop that to the side. Don't fuss with it too much because it can slip out again. Bring over this piece. Now the lines are going this way and I want them to match with the long side of the oval. So I don't want the oval to go this way so that the streaks are going across. I want them to go from the top down. Okay. Cut out my piece. And you can recycle this because this is just one colour of clay. 
bring this over swap that in careful to not get any on the edges and I'm not too worried about fingerprints right now we can tend to those later right now I just want it to be pressed in okay then get it in the middle okay and press And there we go. Then I've got another piece of black here that has been rolled out on my thinnest setting. And I'm just going to give it a burnish so that it's nice, flat and smooth. And this is just going to form our backing because those pieces that we just cut out aren't really stuck together properly and will... Uh, they're not strongly bonded and so they will generally fall apart. So just pop this down doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to take this and use it to gently press. I'm not burnishing because I don't want to uh, remove that light texture that we have. Just pressing it down lightly to get it stuck onto the surface. And then you're going to cut it out again. There we go. And there you go. Now you've got a nice clean back. Gently press that out the cutter. Okay. Bring over another piece of paper which we'll be baking them on. And I'm just going to remove any feathers that might be around the edge first. There we go. And then gently burnish just so that it lays flat on the piece of paper. Okay, and there we go. So, if you need to clean up any feathering that may be around the sides, go ahead and do that. You can also do that after they're baked if you would prefer, uh, but they shouldn't be that much cleanup. I'm going to pop these into the oven for a full hour at pretty much the recommended temperature, and then afterwards we're going to uh, maybe give them just a light sand and finish them off. Okay, and here they are once I have finished them. Now, all I did was, once they were out of the oven, I glossed them off with some Verithane varnish. Uh, we didn't need to do any sanding because they came out very clean uh, before we put them in the oven. So I popped some gloss varnish on them, Verithane specifically. Then I just popped a little silver eye pin at the top of one and added an ear wire. I cut that out because uh, from the analytics on YouTube, I can see that you guys all cut off around that point in the video, so I decided to cut it out. Uh, on this one and just keeping all of the interesting bits I guess. So if you enjoyed this tutorial please do let me know in the comments below and if you would like to support the channel further please do consider becoming a member or a patron. There is a description, there is a link to that in the description below and is greatly appreciated. Uh, if you're interested I post bonus tutorials on there that are not available to the public and that are generally a little more complicated than ones that I show on YouTube. So if you could check that out that is greatly appreciated. And as always I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.